And Kamala Harris was sworn in as the nation's first female vice president, becoming a role model to young girls nationwide. Here's NBC 26's Valerie Juarez. For the first time in history, we have a female leader in the second highest position in the country. It is a historical day for us, and uh, I believe that you know elected officials should represent the people. And that's exactly what Madam Vice President Harris will do. And she's not just representing women, but a demographic that the YWCA says is oftentimes overlooked. She uh, will be an exceptional role model for young girls, but specifically underrepresented young women and girls of color um, that look and see that with hard work and determination, um, a woman can do anything. And Karen Monfrey with the Greater Green Bay Community Foundation agrees, saying it's vital that women are empowered by one another. We, we need um, female leaders who can, can bring us together, can help our country heal, help bring us together, and help provide opportunities for women um, and provide role models for the young girls that are out there watching and looking for those role models. But Monfrey says the fight is far from over. She says girls who have strong female role models often become more successful. We, we celebrate the advancement of women um, and role models for girls, uh, but we're not done yet until we have uh, a woman in the top chair and um, until we really provide equal opportunity for all women and safety and security. In Green Bay, Valerie Juarez, NBC 26. Thank you, Valerie. We'll have more inaugural coverage ahead in our newscast, including what quick changes the Biden administration has planned. We've had a lot of clouds today, mixing with some sunshine at times. In fact, we just had a beautiful sunset here in Green Bay. Those clouds out ahead of our weather maker that's producing a lot of wind and warming us up. Temperatures right now currently in the mid-20s, but just off to our west, we are looking at mid to upper 30s, and that warmer air is going to move in overnight. So temperatures will be going up here. Look for variable cloudiness with very gusty winds out of the south and west at times over 40 miles per hour, getting pretty close to freezing by 11 p.m. Nina? Thank you, Cameron. NBC 26 is your official Packers station. Even though the Packers have made it a habit out of recently, the NFC Championship opportunities don't usually come around every year. Sports Director Brandon Kennard joins us with the latest ahead of Sunday's big game. Nina, Aaron Rodgers will make his fifth career conference championship game start on Sunday. That will tie Brett Favre and a host of others for the sixth most all-time by a quarterback. Joe Montana is in second place with seven, and then there's Tom Brady, who does pretty much get that opportunity every year, out in front with 14 conference championship game starts now. Rogers said today he feels no more pressure this time than he did in any of his previous four NFC title game starts. But at age 37, it is fair to wonder how many more bites at the apple he's going to get. Leading into Sunday's game, though, Rogers says he's just focused on living in the moment. The present is such a gift to just be able to stay in the moment and to have uh, gratitude for being in a situation again and, and being with the guys and having fans at our stadium and maybe snow on an NFC Championship game. I mean, I'm going to enjoy these moments for sure and just not worry about what happens down the line. There'll be, there'll be time uh, when we meet that, uh, that future, and right now I'm just going to enjoy the present. Interesting comment from Devontae Adams today, too. He says deep down he and his teammates know Rodgers deserves to have more than just his one Super Bowl. The teammates rallying around their quarterback. More on that story coming up later in sports. Nina? No doubt about that, Brandon. Thank you. Still ahead, how the Biden administration plans on hitting the ground running and what changes you could see soon. Plus, time to find your good luck charm because the Mega Millions jackpot just keeps growing and growing. Details still ahead. And now your weather with Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland. 
Seasonable temperatures across the area today, but we're not done yet. The temperature is going up before midnight, and then tomorrow we will see another January thaw with highs in the mid to upper 30s. That's ahead of a cold front that will bring sharply colder weather back into the state for Friday and Saturday before we warm up again for Sunday and Monday. Right now, temperatures range from the upper teens across the north to the upper 20s in Watoma. And with southwest winds, the temperature is going to be climbing as we head deeper into the evening. Right now in Appleton, it is 23 and it is windy. In Green Bay, it is 24 and it is also windy. We've been looking at southwest winds gusting between 30 and 40 miles per hour. Right now, Oshkosh is gusting to 35 miles per hour, and those winds are expected to increase as we head deeper into the night with winds gusting 40 to 45 miles per hour at times. We have a strong area of low pressure now passing across southern Canada. We've got a warm front moving through. We'll have a cold front move through later on tonight, and then another cold front is going to move through tomorrow afternoon. In between those two fronts this afternoon, temperatures were in the 30s to around 40 degrees, and that's the warm air that's going to move into northeast Wisconsin for tomorrow. I'm thinking most of us will probably be in the upper 30s, but I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of locations actually got up into the lower 40s. We'll see a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the morning. As the cold front moves in during the afternoon, It'll kick off a few snow showers. Anytime you have snow showers, the snow could be briefly heavy. I'm not expecting any crazy accumulations, but just keep that in mind. Lots of sunshine returns on Friday, and so do the colder temperatures. In fact, Friday will be the coldest day of the winter so far. All right, let's look at what we're expecting for the NFC Championship game at Lambeau Field. Still no major changes from the past couple of days. I'm still forecasting snow. The big question mark right now continues to be how much snow and will the snow linger through the game or will it be over before kickoff? We'll fine tune those forecast details as we get a little bit closer. Temperatures will be in the upper 20s. So tonight, look for a variable cloudiness with temperatures going up. It'll be windy. Overnight lows right now and then climbing tomorrow, windy and warmer, sunshine early, then clouds and some snow showers by the afternoon. High temperatures tomorrow will be in the 30s to around 40 degrees, sharply colder on Friday with lots of sunshine, 18 for a high, 22 on Saturday, snow coming in Saturday night and then lingering into Sunday. How long it lingers? Once again, I'll update the forecast as we get closer. Chance for some snow on Monday and then colder weather for Tuesday and Wednesday. Nina? Sunday's looking good so far, Cameron. Thank you. Coming up, with the stroke of a pen, a look at the executive orders President Biden plans on signing and how they could affect your life. Next. President Biden wasting no time getting to work. In the midst of the inaugural events, Biden signing a number of executive orders. So what is he changing right away and what will take some time? Our Joe St. George is in Washington and explains. We've come so far. But we still have far to go. President Joe Biden is now in office, the country's 46th president, and he's already changing policies impacting Americans through executive orders, which don't require approval from Congress. Big change number one, federal student loan payments suspended again. It is one of the president's first actions. You will not have a payment until October at the earliest. But for Americans with massive student debt... About 200 and. 15,000. Renee Nicole Allen is hoping Biden does more than just that in the next four years. Canceling some student loan debt would be nice. I think we really need to evaluate our education costs. Big change number two, banning evictions and foreclosures through March. It's estimated 14 million Americans are behind on rent and 11 million are behind on their mortgage. Big change number three, ending travel restrictions for some majority Muslim countries. I'm a proud Iranian American. Kevin Amir Ashani is with the Iranian American Council. He says former President Trump's restrictions stopped family and friends from visiting the U.S. for years. That changes today. We have people who have not been able to be in touch with their parents for years, in some cases missing funerals. We've had children born here uh, who have not seen, who have not met or seen their grandparents. And big change number four, rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement and canceling the Keystone XL pipeline. That's a big win for environmentalists who are concerned about the climate, like Ken Ilgunis, who walked across the 1700 mile pipeline route back in 2012. Yeah, I do have some anxiety over climate change. 
out of the sake of my daughter's life. A new mask mandate as well by the new president impacting when you enter a federal building or when you participate in interstate travel. But the biggest priorities of the new president will require congressional action. He's set to send a comprehensive immigration bill to Congress. He's already introduced a COVID economic relief package, more stimulus checks. But each one of those issues requires debate and time, and it may be several weeks or months before they get passed. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Coming up, there are nearly a billion reasons why you might consider buying a lottery ticket before Friday. We'll tell you which game to play next. The Mega Millions jackpot climbs once again. No ticket matched all six numbers in last night's drawing. The jackpot now, now soars to an estimated 900